old-timers might recognize it as root hog. We're talking really old-timers, like those who remember the time immediately following the Civil War. That's about the time when a town by that name, root hog, sprang up in the eastern Idaho desert. And we assume the name spawned from the catchphrase, root hog or die, the anthem of being self-reliant based on what happens when you let hogs out to fend for themselves. So they either root for food or they die. Anyway, if you spend any time in the area around Arco, Idaho, you can probably understand why it was possibly named root hog. Either you figured out how to survive there in the desert or you didn't. The name changed to Arco sometime after the turn of the 20th century, after George von Arco, a German scientist who specialized in radio transmission. Why him, you may be wondering? Well, because he just happened to be visiting Washington, D.C. at the time, and when the townsfolk of Root Hog wanted to get a post office, well, they also wanted to change the name of the town, surprisingly. Well, the postmaster suggested Arco after that German scientist. All of that to get to this. Root Hog, or Arco, has survived as the first city in the world powered completely by atomic energy. This happened on this day just before midnight, July 17, 1955. Now, granted, it was only powered by atomic energy for about 90 minutes. So why such a short time? Well, because the fine folks at the Idaho National Laboratory, what was then known as the National Reactor Testing Station, well, they just wanted to prove they could do it. Because we were in the middle of a Cold War and in a race with the Soviets to harness nuclear energy for both weapons and, well, energy. So we created the EBR-1, the Experimental Breeder Reactor, one, in the middle of 900 square miles of Idaho sagebrush. And in 1951, the scientists at the lab built the world's first nuclear power plant just to prove they could do it. That's the first time in the whole world where you have usable amounts of electricity coming from nuclear power. The next one, the Rush Soviets were the first ones to put power on the grid, nuclear power on the grid. So by 1955, the United States really wanted something to, you know, move ahead with. And so they wanted to power an entire city with nuclear power. Okay, so it only powered the city for 90 minutes. Has it been used to power the city since? No. Why did it not continue powering ARCO? Well, because they proved that they could. But then they stood up the next month in Geneva at the Adams for Peace Conference. The U.S. representative said, we have powered an entire American city with nuclear power. And people were so amazed. And there was a gasp. They're like, oh, because when you think of an American city, probably New York. Yeah. Next one's maybe Los Angeles. Sure. Arco's not in the third place, right? They left out the part that was a town of about a thousand people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, okay, here's the thing. If you can power a city of 900 people with nuclear power, you could power a city with 9 million with nuclear power. Sure, EBR-1 operated about 12 years before shutting down in 1963. You know, you can still visit the original lab every day of the week through summer from nine to five. And Shelley, she tells us the United States now relies on nuclear energy for 20% of its power. And all of the clean energy we use, that includes hydro, solar, wind, well, nuclear energy accounts for about 65% of that. And if INL is all about proving the principle that they can do it just because they can, well, they have. The original plan was to be in the Idaho desert for about 15 years, build about 10 reactors. They've now been there nearly three quarters of a century and have built 53 reactors with more coming online in the near future. So yeah, root hog or die indeed.